service tonight. Yes, it is yes. good to be in the house of the Lord once again. Yes, we yes. welcome you to church tonight. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Let's invite the presence yes. of God into this service tonight. We welcome your presence, Lord. We come to you in the name of Jesus tonight, Lord. As we come before your throne of grace, Father, we ask you to meet every need tonight. We thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you, God, for your mercy, for the power of your word, God, for the power of your presence tonight. And we just lift our heart to you, lift our cup, and we ask you to fill it one more time, Lord. Have your way tonight in this service, God. You know what we need, Lord, and we just pray and ask that your divine will be done in each of our lives, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' unfailing name. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord tonight. Amen. I believe the true report. I believe the true report. Page 242. 242. <laughs>
tonight in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The blood still has power. Amen. Yes. And no matter what the need might be, the blood of Jesus, it can cover it, it can handle it tonight. God's power and God's grace is sufficient. Do you believe that tonight? Amen. 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 It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Once again, we're glad you're here tonight. And just allow the Lord to speak to you tonight in this service. We're thankful for everyone here this evening, everyone online watching tonight we welcome you we're glad you're here let's just open our hearts to the word of the lord tonight as we're back again to receive more of his goodness more of his word tonight in this service and yes. a wonderful time this morning in the house of god good to be back again tonight in the house of god and a happy father's day we missed you this morning happy father's day tonight amen, amen. happy father's day we give honor to god our heavenly father and we give honor to our earthly fathers on this day amen, amen. And so we recognize that we are thankful for all of our fathers and all that they do and their position and their place and we just give thanks tonight amen, amen. And so good to be here welcome let's god let god have his way tonight in your heart and in your soul and we're going to pray for the offering tonight and we thank you for your giving and the offering to meet the needs of the work of god and we would not exist without your giving and your faithfulness to your tithe and offering as unto the Lord. You give tonight as unto the Lord, and the Lord will bless you for your giving. Yes. We have a, a container in the back there for everyone that is here present with us. You can leave it there on your way out tonight, or even while, just while we're uh, praying or singing a song. You're welcome to slip back there and put a tithe or offering in there or wait till after the service. But we do thank you for your giving. God's been good to us. Amen. 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 God's been faithful to us. Yes. And uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's right and it's good to give back to the Lord uh, out of what he has given to us. Amen. 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 The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So give cheerfully as unto the Lord. Amen. And it's such a blessing to be able to give. As Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to what? Than to receive. Amen. Amen. And if you want to be blessed, you want to be happy. Be cheerful. Be a giver. Because what goes around comes around in this life. Amen. As a man soweth, the Bible says, so shall he also reap. And I want you to know, you cannot outgive the Lord tonight. Yeah, that's right. I have proven him time and time again that when yeah. you give to the Lord and you're not, you're not stingy with God and you're not tight with the Lord, when you give and you give to be a blessing, amen, it comes back again. It's a law of God, and it's a promise of His Word. Yes. You give tonight as unto the Lord, and God will bless you for it. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your giving, of, Lord, of your faithful people. We thank you for providing a way and for providing the means. We know that every good and perfect gift comes from above. We know that everything we have, Lord, is because of your blessing and because of your grace. God, thank you for the financial blessings. God, thank you for physical blessings, for spiritual blessings. We thank you, God, tonight for all that you've done for us. Bless the gift and the giver tonight that it goes to meet the needs of your house. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Lord, open the windows of heaven upon the givers, upon your people. And Lord, bless them for the generosity we pray. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. And amen.
down, church. Thank he didn't you, come down. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we worship yes. you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's lift our hands up to the Lord tonight. Let's give him praise. Thank you, Aren't you thankful he didn't come down from the cross? Amen. He didn't come down from the cross. Amen. He didn't just come down from fulfilling the will of the Father. He went all the way for you and for me tonight. Oh, hallelujah. God, we worship you and we thank you. Lord, in your love and in your plan, you went all the way so that we could go all the way for you tonight. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Aren't you glad he didn't come down? Amen. 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 Jesus went all the way tonight for you and for me. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Thank you, Jesus. I'm reading tonight from the book of First Samuel. As we look to the word of the Lord this evening, I'm reading from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30 and verse 8. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8 through 10 tonight. This is the same area that we were in on Thursday evening. And I want to um, follow up and get a point that we did not preach on Thursday night. This is a different message, but coming from the same area of the scriptures. 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. 1 Samuel 30 and verse 8. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. And so David went, he and the six hundred men that were with him, and came to the brook Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and four hundred men, for two hundred abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Besor. And jumping down to verse 24, verse 24, I want to read for a text tonight. This is David answering, For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle, so shall his part be that tarrieth by the stuff. They shall part alike. Read again, for who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle, so shall his part be that tarrieth by the stuff. They shall part alike. And with the help of the Lord tonight, I want to preach on the title, Stay with the Stuff. Stay with the Stuff. Amen. Amen. Let us pray and ask God's blessing tonight. Reverend Aristotle Zabel, sir, will you please pray? Father, we're thankful once again for your goodness and one of, another opportunity to be in your house. Bless once again your preacher as he delivers what you've laid upon his heart. Let it go forth and have, let, give us ears to receive your word and let us draw closer to you. We just thank you for your goodness and your blessing tonight. We ask all of this in Jesus' wonderful name. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you. I want to preach tonight on the message, Stay with the Stuff. Coming to you from 1 Samuel 30, where we preached the other night. And just to lay a little bit of background for those that uh, were not here for that opportunity. David and his men had just come back from being, uh, let's say, from, from a battle. David and his men... Uh, were coming back to their city. The city was the, by, called by the name of Ziklag. And he and his men were coming back, and they found that their city had been attacked. And the Bible says that the Amalekite people had come in and had taken control of the city, had taken all of David's wives and all of the people's wives and children and animals and took all that David and the people owned and began to leave and began to just take it captive and 
they set fire to the city of Ziklag. And it would be in this moment and during this occasion that David and the men were faced with a very serious battle and a very serious problem. Where it was here, as you remember, that David's men were upset with him. And they even began to talk about stoning him and killing him because he had taken them out on a battle away from their city and away from their families. And he had left them all unguarded. They left the whole city of Ziklag unguarded. And all of the men with David went out and they were attempting to fight a battle that they should not have been fighting. And that was alongside of the Philistines, the enemies of Israel. And through all of that we find they come back and... And it would be here that David began to, as you remember, encourage himself in the Lord. And he began to get a hold of God. Yes. He began to look at God instead of looking at the situation. And began to find encouragement in putting his faith and his trust in God. The one that he knew was able to deliver him. Amen. Amen. And he encouraged himself, the Bible says. And he prayed in that prayer as we read to you. And he asked God, what should he do? Should he pursue? Should he go after them? And he was looking for the divine guidance of God before he did anything. A lesson that we all should learn and apply all the time in our life. Amen? To learn to pray before we go. To learn to pray before we make decisions. To learn to pray before we do things. And get God's mind and God's heart on the matter. Because God knows a whole lot more than we do tonight. Amen. Amen. And God is able to lead us and guide us uh, in his footsteps for his glory. And David, as he waited upon God, God told him, go. And the Bible says he and the men began to make their way to go after the Amalekites to get their stuff back. Amen. Amen. Because they weren't going to settle for just being robbed and being pillaged. They understood that there were some things that belonged to them. And they were not going to allow the enemy to take it so easily. Amen. Amen. And I believe we ought to make a stand. Every one of us as Christians, as people. There's some things that the devil, the enemy of our soul, wants to steal from us tonight. Yes. Wants to steal from the church. Wants to steal from families. But as people of God, we have authority and we have power to be able to go after and take back what the devil has stolen from us tonight. Yes. We have authority in God's word and in, in, the, in the name of Jesus. Yes. And when we get his word and we get his go ahead, we will without, without a doubt recover everything that was stolen from us. Because as David, the Bible says, recovered all. Even his two wives. And there was a great victory as David went uh, and began to take over and to take control and take back what was stolen. And we find in this story that there was uh, 200 men, 200 of them were not, did not go with the 600 to go and get the stuff back. Why was that? Because the Bible says 200 of them were too faint to, to be able to go into the battle and to cross the brook. They were already so tired and so worn out that they came, that they just, they waited. David told them, just stay with the stuff while we go with the 400 and go get our other stuff back. Amen. Amen. And so these 200 men really is the focus of this message tonight because it would be these 200 that stayed by the stuff, this stuff being their belongings, their property, whatever, whatever things that may have been too heavy for the rest of the soldiers to carry into battle, they would remain behind because they were too tired and too faint to, to go and make a real difference in fighting the battle. Yes. But it would be these 200 men that became a, a, a message, if you will, and became something that, that David would end up uh, uh, establishing as a statute from this point on forever. Because when they came back from the battle, the 400 men, we know that they recovered everything. They got their wives back. They got everything back that was stolen from them. And then some. Amen? Amen. And then some. Because the Amalekites had gone on a, on a looting spree. And it wasn't just the Ziklag, uh, city of Ziklag that they, had, that they had conquered on the way. But they had gotten other cities. And so David not only got their own stuff back, but got a lot more in return. 
And so as they're coming back, uh, they're getting ready, to, they're celebrating, and they're coming back to the 200 that were left behind, uh, and they're cheering, and they're celebrating, uh, and uh, the people that were there, the 400, the Bible says that David, or the Bible says that they were men of Belial. These were not Israelites, these were not righteous people. Again, remember, these were that assembled group of misfits and people that were that were just uh, out there uh, in society. They needed a leader. They needed someone to rally behind. And David had gathered them. And he had uh, been a leader to them. And these men of Belial, the scripture says, uh, began to argue and complain and tell David that there's no way that the 200 men that didn't lift a finger in the battle, that didn't fight, that were too tired to go into the battle, these men said that there's no way that they're going to partake of the spoils of our battle. And they had a real problem with this, but it would be David that would stand up for them. It would be David that would defend them and say, in so many words, who's going to listen to you in this matter? Anyway, because he was in charge. And he told and made a statute that day that everyone that stayed with the stuff and everyone that went to the battle, they're going to part alike. We're all equal in this thing is what David was saying. Just because they were too faint doesn't mean that they're not important. Just because they didn't do what you did doesn't mean they're not still part of this family. And just because they didn't do any of the hard work that you thought should have been done does not mean they don't have a right to be blessed. Hallelujah. Yes. And so David stood up for them and he, 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 he commended those 200 that stayed behind. Why? Because they still did something that was needful. They still stayed behind with the stuff and there still needed to be somebody there to protect what little they had left. And David honored them for that. Yes. And my message tonight is this. Stay with the stuff. We as Christians, we as people People of God, amen, we, amen, need to be inspired to also stay with the stuff, uh, the stuff that God has blessed us with, uh, the stuff that God has made us responsible for, the stuff that he's put in our care, amen, uh, the stuff that he's placed before us, uh, and there's a lot of stuff that God has given us tonight, uh, there's a lot of stuff that God has poured out, uh, amen, over every one of us, uh, and we have an obligation before God to stay with it, uh, and watch over it and protect it so the enemy doesn't take control of it. Amen. Amen. And so it'd be here that David recommended them and commended them because they stayed with the stuff. I remember the first time I heard this, this part of the message, and it's not something you would necessarily uh, would hear a whole lot of in the Old Testament, especially the word stuff. <laughs> you don't really expect to hear that from the King James uh, or even the Old Testament. Amen? Amen. You expect uh, a whole lot more of different words, and but he said those that stayed with the stuff. <laughs> Amen. You know, we can just be real tonight. Amen. Amen. There's some stuff uh, that we need to stay with. There's some stuff that we need to watch over. There's some stuff that we need to amen, manage properly before Almighty God. And I remember the first time I heard this message when I was in Germany. It was probably 1996, uh, I think it was 1996 or 97. I was in some PLDC training uh, to become an E5 in the Army. And I was in training away from the church in Grafenbeer, Germany. And it would be here that I went to one of the chapel services that was close by on a Sunday. And this army chaplain, who I never met or seen before, he got up and preached a message to those of us that were there in the chapel. And he preached right from this text here. And right from this passage. And his message was the same title that I'm giving you tonight. And that is, Stay With The Stuff. And his message to us at that time, although we're away from church and away from our families and away from uh, our, in, in a training setting, we're away from people. He said, it's important that you're encouraged to stay with the stuff uh, that God has given you. Amen. Yes. And I believe it's the same way tonight. Uh, amen. The church uh, assembly, as it were, it's been broken up because of the pandemic. Uh, and people are scattered and people are separated. And there's been some that haven't been to church in two or three months. Uh, and the message really resonates with us tonight because we need to stay with the stuff. Amen. Yes. We need to stay with the God stuff in our lives. Amen. And we need to stay with the things that God has blessed us with uh, so that 
we don't let them slip and that we don't let the devil get a foothold in the things that belong to the children of Almighty God. Yes. Amen. What kind of stuff do we need to stay with tonight? We need to stay with the prayer stuff. Amen? Amen. The prayer stuff. I hope I'm not boring anyone if you're on your phones tonight. I am preaching out of respect and honor. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. What kind of stuff should we stay with? The prayer stuff. The prayer stuff. Amen. One of the things that got David the victory anyway was because he knew how to pray. Yes. We need to stick with prayer. Amen. As people Amen. of God. Amen. Just because we may be away from church doesn't mean we can't and should be away from prayer. In our relationship with God. Just because these 200 were left behind and needed to rest did not mean that they did not have any part to play in the battle that was being undertaken. Yeah. Even though they may not have fought physically, we know that they still could have fought spiritually and in prayer yes. for the rest of the men. Amen. Prayer changes things tonight. Yeah. Especially when we are faint. Amen? Amen, amen? Especially when we are faint. Listen to what he said in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29 to 31. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. He gives power to the faint. God gives power to the faint tonight. Amen. amen? If you're faint, if you're weary, if you're weak, if you need strength, if you need help, the rest of this passage here lets us know exactly what kind of stuff we need to hold on to in order to regain our strength again. Amen. 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 And he said, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon who? Upon the Lord yes. shall renew their strength. Yes. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, yes. and they shall walk and not faint. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. An encouragement from the Word of God. This is some of the stuff that we need now more than ever. Yeah. The prayer kind of stuff. Waiting upon God kind of stuff. Uh, when we're faint, when we're weary, uh, understand and remember, church, that there's power in prayer. Amen. Yes. Yes. Thank God for prayer tonight. Uh, thank God for the open door in heaven uh, where Jesus said, All you have to do is ask and you shall receive. Uh, yes. Seek and you shall find. Yes. Knock and it shall be opened unto yes. us. Uh, we have an open door to heaven tonight, brothers and sisters. Uh, and we need to stay with that stuff. Stay in your prayer closet. Uh, stay current with God. Uh, and no matter what happens, uh, you can find relief uh, from the faint, uh, from the faintness, from the weakness, from the things that this world lays on us, uh, we can go to God and be renewed every single time. Yes. When you're exhausted, when you can't go over, and when you can't do the things that you may have wanted to do, stay with the prayer stuff tonight. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Amen. Jesus gave a wonderful invitation over 2,000 years ago, an invitation that's still being given and offered tonight to come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Amen. We know what, kind of, we know what labor is tonight. Everyone here, we know what labor is. Yes. To labor. Amen. Some of you, you're blessed to be retired. You may not labor physically, maybe like you did at one time in your life. But those that are still working and still doing things, you know, after a hard day's labor, physical labor, Amen. Lifting them Amazon boxes, Greg. Amen. Or doing whatever you, whatever else is done. It's hard work sometimes. We know what labor does. It drains your physical strength. Yeah. Well, Jesus wasn't just talking about labor and people that were tired physically. Amen. Yeah. Jesus did more tonight to die, to dying on the cross and paying the price for sin to do. He did more, amen, at the cross and by his blood than just to give us a, a good night's sleep. Amen? amen. Yes, he restores us physically, but the true rest that people need is the rest in their soul. Yes. The rest in their heart because so many people are tired emotionally. They're tired spiritually. They're tired in their heart. They're tired in their mind because they've been carrying burdens and cares and they're heavy laden. Well, there's good news tonight because this stuff called prayer actually works. Yes. And we can come to Jesus because he invites us and we can unload on him and he'll take the cares and he'll take the burdens and he'll give us rest tonight. 
and for our soul and for our spirit. Amen. Amen. It happens, but there's no excuse for a child of God to walk around heavy laden and burdened down and all depressed and all sad. And it happens, and, and we're all susceptible to having feelings and moments like that. But don't we have a wonderful thing called prayer tonight? Yes. Amen. Don't we have a wonderful thing t tonight with Jesus that we can call upon Him? The Bible says, casting all your care upon Him because He cares for you. He cares for you tonight. He cares for every one of us. And it's the prayer stuff, amen, that we need to stay with. Yes. Stay with the stuff. Not only should we stay with the prayer stuff, we should stay with the positive stuff. Yes. The positive stuff. We need more positive stuff in the world tonight. Amen. Amen. We need more positive conversations. Yes. We need more positive fellowships. Amen. We need more positive uh, uh, news stories. Amen. amen and amen. We need more positive just reports on and on and on. And there's a lot out there, but sadly we don't hear them because some people like the negative stuff. But the church, the Christians, the child of God, we should stay with the positive stuff. Amen. Yes. We should choose those things that are positive and that bring glory to God and not dwell upon things or feed upon things that are negative. Why? Because it will harm your attitude and it will harm your spirit. And the next thing you know, you're sad, you're messed up, and you're not thinking right, and you're agitated. Why? Because we weren't staying with the positive stuff. We allowed it to rub off on us. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. You ever Amen. listen to something negative and it got you upset? Yes. You ever listen to something on the news, radio, or people having conversations? Sometimes people are a source of negativity. Amen. 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 And it's just that way. It's just that way. What is it? What's the guy? I always forget the name of that character in the cartoon, Pigpen. Was it Pigpen? The one that always had that cloud following him around. Pigpen. Is it Pigpen? Yeah. Cloud. Follow everywhere he went. There was a cloud and a thunder cloud and always raining. It's like everywhere he went. I don't know who it was, but there's, there's some people that. Ehor. Ehor, the donkey? Yeah. Was it the donkey? Yeah. Pigpen from oh. Charlie Brown. Pigpen from Charlie Brown? I, I think every cartoon probably has a negative character, right? Pigpen was just dirty. Yeah. Well. Dirty, dirty mind, dirty thoughts, same thing. <laughs> but God help us. You ever notice that? There's just some people just seem to have a cloud over their head. Everywhere they go, just always cloud, raining, thunder, just chaos, just confusion. Why is that? We need to stay with the positive stuff tonight. Because we serve a positive God. Amen? Yes, amen. We serve a positive God that did something positive for us. Amen. On a cross, yes. and it looks like a positive sign. Amen. 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 Because he wanted us to be positive and have a positive outcome in life and a positive outlook on life. Yes, yes we know things are real. Yes, we know there's a struggle. Yes, we know there's problems and issues. Uh, but it does not help us to dwell on the negative when there's a lot more positive if we would just look for it tonight. Yes. What did Paul say in Philippians chapter 4? Verse 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. This is the word of God. And this is what we call food for thought tonight. The Bible tells us what we should even think about. Amen. Did you know that? The Bible gives us everything and the answers for everything we need in concerning this life. Yes. How to walk, how to talk, even how to think. He said, finally, brethren, think of whatever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, what did he say? Think on these things, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, Paul said, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. Amen. Don't Read over that verse. The God of peace will be with you. When we do what? When we're thinking on the right things. 
When we're thinking of the pure and the lovely and the things that are virtuous, the God of peace will be with us. Amen. Yes. He'll come alongside of us. He'll wrap his arms around us. He'll comfort us and help us. Why? Because God is good. God is true. God is honest. Amen. God is a good report tonight. God is virtuous and praiseworthy. And when we get our mind on the positive stuff, the God of peace will be with us. Yes. It'll refresh us. It'll renew us. It'll help us to get back on track with God. Yes. Stay with the stuff tonight, the positive stuff. Tonight, I'm reminded of the... Of the the 12 spies that went out to spy the land. Y'all remember that story, don't you? Yes. The 12 spies were told uh, by Moses to go out and spy out the promised land because God had given them the land and, and Moses wanted them to go get a report. Bring back a report, uh, just a sample of what's out there for us. Uh, and I believe, I believe it was Moses' intention to get a sample of what was out there so as to bring encouragement to the people that were there. I believe it was to get a report and get a sample. And the Bible says, man, they, they were bringing back grape clusters so big that they had to carry it between two people. This was a land that was blessed. Amen. Amen. These weren't uh, uh, or organically or, or some chemically modified grapes like you see in our markets today. <laughs> but these things were just natural and full. And these things were huge. And it was just blessed. And this was just a sample of the land that God had promised to his people. Amen. Yes. Amen. Sometimes God lets us get a little sample of heaven here on earth. Amen. When he lets us feel his presence. Or when he gives us a glimpse of the good things that are to come. And we're supposed to be encouraged by these things. And we're supposed to take heart in these things. And so he sent out the spies and they came back and they were showing them all of this good stuff that is there. But ten of the twelve spies, they stayed with the negative stuff rather than the positive stuff. Because ten of them said, yes, there's land and yes, there's blessings and there's it's flowing milk and honey but their focus was on the negative stuff their focus was on the giants their focus was on the walled cities their focus was on all the all the negative things in their heart that they did not believe they could overcome we thank God for the two that stayed with the stuff. Amen? Amen. They stayed with the positive stuff because they came back with a good report. Amen. The Bible says the report that the ten spies brought back was an evil report. Amen. Why was it evil? Because it doubted God. Amen. Why was it evil? Because it was of unbelief. Amen. Why was it evil? Because they did not believe that God can do it. Amen. Amen. But the two, Joshua and Caleb, said... Just stop all this complaining. Stop all this and let us go up at once. Yes. What did they say? We are well able. Amen. Yes. We can go right now, Moses. We can do this. Why? Because they believed in a positive God. Amen. And they believed they could do it. And the Bible says the people gave heed to the ten rather than the two. It happens over and over again where people believe the majority rather than the minority. But you see, God would reward them and God would help them because the day would come where Joshua and Caleb would enter into the promised land. And you know what? All the doubters and all the negative people and all those that stayed with the wrong stuff, they didn't see the promised land, did they? Why? Because they chose not to believe and they chose to focus on the negative rather than the power of the God that they were serving. Amen. Amen. This is so important tonight that we stay with the stuff. There will be people that will outnumber us that will say we can't and they'll say it's too hard and they'll say no, the world's, the world's just dying and nothing's ever going to work out and nothing will be the same again. Brother, I choose to stay with the positive stuff. Why? Because my hope and our hope isn't in the media, isn't in the White House, isn't in people, it isn't in the doctors, but it's in Almighty God tonight. Yes. Amen. It's in the one who has all power and all strength, and He alone can change it. It's just the speaking of His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our trust is in God. 
We're not doubting tonight. We're not living in fear tonight. Amen. Amen. I'm not afraid to go to church or afraid to go out in public because uh, I know who God is tonight. Amen. Amen. I know that His power is able and He is real. And if I do get sick, let me get sick. Uh, I'm not asking for it, but I'm going to die someday anyway. All of us are going to die someday. Amen. Whether it's from a flu or a Mack truck on Cleveland Avenue, God forbid, we're all going to die someday. Right. What are we afraid of? Amen. What are we afraid of? People are living in fear. People are scared. People are hiding in their houses, hiding in their basements. Uh, they're afraid. Why? Because they've been staying with the wrong stuff. Amen. Amen. I'm not doubting that there's, that there's something going on out there. But if we're children of God and if we're really believers, uh, what do we have to fear? Amen. What do we have to fear? I'm going to die someday, and if it's coronavirus, guess what? I'll get an early trip to heaven. Amen. I'll get an early trip to heaven, right? Isn't that what we're trying to do anyway? Aren't we trying to go to heaven? Amen? Isn't that our hope? Isn't that what we're looking for? Amen? Now, don't send me there early, because, you know, I'm not asking. Amen. But if it happens... And God allows it. Hallelujah. Yes. Right? Hallelujah. What kind of stuff are we staying with tonight? What kind of stuff is it that we need to stay with? I'm closing here. Not only should we stay with prayer stuff, the prayer stuff. We need to stay with the prayer stuff. We need to maintain our prayer life. We need to maintain that, that kind of relationship with God. We need to stay on with the positive stuff. And lastly, we need to stay with the powerful stuff. The powerful stuff. We need to sing about it. Talk about it. Let it be in our testimonies. Let it be in our words. Let it be in the way we talk to one another. David said, Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. It's good to sing about the power of God. To sing songs that lift our hearts and lift our souls tonight. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. We need to stay with the powerful stuff. Prayer is powerful, yes. These things are powerful. Being positive is powerful. But what about actually applying Amen. That worship and living a life of praise and worship before God. It'll do us good to remember the songs and remember the words and just start singing it and just start, just let it be something that you stay with and something that stays with you. Sing a song while you're driving down the street. Turn on some Christian music. Turn on something powerful. Yes. Something that will bring the glory of God down. Something that will focus your heart on heaven and focus your mind on God. Yes. Because these things are powerful. Prayer is powerful. Worship is powerful. Praise is powerful. Yes. Because when the praise goes up, come on, the blessing comes yes. down. Yes. Because when we draw near to God, He will draw near unto us yes. tonight. Yes. He gives power. Power to who? To the faint. Amen. Yes. It's powerful to wait on God. It's powerful to sing praises. It's powerful even in the middle of a storm just to begin to sing and magnify the Lord. Because remember, it was even Paul and Silas in a jail cell at midnight. They were staying with the powerful stuff. What was that praise and worship? Yes. They began singing. They began praying at midnight. And that's when the things began to shake. And the glory of God came down and set them free. Why? Because they made a decision. We may be in jail and we may be locked up, but our spirit isn't locked up. Our praise isn't locked up. Our rejoicing isn't locked up. And no matter where we are, we can still give God the glory. And it's powerful tonight. Let's choose the powerful stuff and not the negative and the weak things and the things that the world tries to offer. There's a blessing tonight when we choose the right stuff and when we stay with the stuff. The blessing was the same. 
for David's men, the 200 and the 400, they all parted alike and they were all blessed. Why? Because they all did something. Amen. They all did something and it all went for the same cause. And the same holds true tonight. We're not all the same in God. We don't all have the same function. We don't all do the same job. But you know what? When you're part of the body of Christ, we all are benefactors of the same blessing. Amen. 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 Whether yes. you're a pastor, amen, or a church member, whatever we might be tonight, we're all part of the body of Christ. And we all have access to the throne of God. And when we need help, we can find it. When we need power, we can find it. Yes. All we have to do is come boldly because we have access by faith tonight to the greatest stuff that there is. Amen. amen. The greatest stuff available is not the stuff of this world. Amen. amen. It's not the stuff that we get and the stuff that we have and the stuff that we can handle, but it's the supernatural. It's the powerful. It's the prayer stuff. It's the stuff that many times you can't see, but you can feel it and you know it's real by putting our faith in God. My word tonight is stay with the stuff. Amen. amen. Stay with the stuff. As your heads are bowed and eyes are closed in reverence to Him, these altars, we're going to open, we're going to pray and call upon the name of the Lord. Yes. And tonight our prayer is that God would bless you, God would speak to you, and that you would be encouraged to stay with the stuff. Stay with the right stuff between you and God. And remember what He's given. And remember what He has made available to every one of us tonight. And all we have to do is pray. And look to God, and He will bless you. Let's seek Him. Come get what you need from God tonight. God bless you as I pray.